I was trained in the military, and I was trained in all this survival stuff, and over the years I've learnt a lot of cool things. But I've never seen it done in a game very well, though many have tried. But when I played Sons of the Forest, I found myself in a helicopter flying towards some island, then crash landing in one of three different locations, and being forced to gather supplies from the crash site, and basically get into survival mode. Find shelter, water, food, ASAP. And this game lets you do all that. I mean, I was soon finding firewood, building a waterproof shelter, and twatting seagulls with an axe for food. And thanks to my handy survival kit, which just happens to have a lighter, I was saved the endless, tedious process of banging bits of flint together like a primitive caveman. Now, this game gives you a few tools and pointers in how to build more. In fact, you get a lot of cool supplies at the crash site, such as flares, tape, even a grenade. And I was soon self-sufficient, living it up on the beach. But what more is there to this game other than survival? Well, you can build pretty much anything. You can cut down trees, make weapons, spears. However, after exploring a cave, I came face to face with some mutant abomination from hell that not only scared the shit out of me, but also beat the shit out of me in the dark. I soon realised this game has more than just hungry cannibals to worry about. And when you crash land on the beach, you soon realise there's a lot of hostiles nearby when you find some men impaled on the beach by pieces of wood. Add to that the fact you find bullets means there's no doubt guns there somewhere. And you soon realise this game has a lot going for it. For a start, it looks great. The island, the trees, the water, the day and night cycles, it all comes together well. This game was a bit like Subnautica. It was released as just a playable work in progress that became a full game as time went by with updates. And I came to it late. But as someone who loves survival games, I found this a great surprise. Sure, it's still a bit rough around the edges at times with updates. You'll probably get a better game. But I like playing games like Stranded Deep, which I wanted to like but found the bugs annoying. This game is much better than that and has much more beneath the surface. The game is actually quite peaceful at times as you collect firewood, build your shelter, but food and fresh water are a constant worry. Thankfully there's an abundance of wildlife on the island, or to put it another way a shitload of animals to hunt. But instead of building elaborate traps my philosophy was to save time and run at a seagull like a mad axe murderer. I actually found killing seagulls with an axe quite satisfying, and you can cut the meat off them and cook it on the fire. I guess you could eat it raw, but that would probably make you sick. This game allows you to build almost anything, but one of the most handy things to build in any survival situation is a good old spear for hunting and self-defence. And with a handy little book, you'll soon get the hang of it.
Now, this game has a multiplayer option, but the NPC that you start with is an absolute idiot. I mean, not only can he not build a fire, but he sets himself on fire. I don't even know how he managed to do it. I mean, look at him. Complete and a knob. It's like I leave him alone for like five minutes and he manages to set himself on fire. I mean, who does that? Not only that, but the guy is deaf. He's been injured in the accident, so he can't hear anything you say. So you've got to just write everything down for him and just stick it to him so he understands what to do. And half the time, I just want him to fuck off. Or at least just stop setting himself on fire every two minutes. This cave was a real eerie surprise. I really liked the atmosphere and how dark it was and how creepy. And I don't want to spoil too much of the game, but I carried on looking for this cave and it's absolutely massive. And I ended up finding something that basically killed me and it was absolutely surprising and horrifying. I mean, it was, it was creepy. It was like something out of Silent Hill. This game is all about crafting, and it really is a learning process. But once you start chopping down trees, which, again, feels really satisfying, you soon realise that you can basically build your own fortress over time, which is probably a lot easier in multiplayer. This game looks great, the details are nice, and as well as the whole survival thing and crafting, there's much more. The island has different parts and gives you some very different environments too, like the mountains and snow. And of course, on top of all that, you've got real genuine horror. I'd give this game about 88 out of 100. I mean, it's got so much going for it, nice graphics, the sound quality's nice, and yes, there's a few bugs, and yet it still needs a few updates, but there's so much in this game, and it really is addictive. You know, and a lot of fun. And I just love exploring. You know, it's a great place to have an adventure.